It's Charter Local Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz. We're joined by John Warlock. He is a member of the California State Senate. Prior to joining the legislature, you were a board member of the Board of Supervisors. You were treasurer, both in Orange County. How is it being in Sacramento comparing those two after your first year? Well, the, uh, the difference that I've noticed the most is right. how ADD uh, Sacramento is. Well it's, it's very... Um, spontaneous it's 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 not like a supervisor where you get your agenda on Wednesday right. morning you can make calls to have your staff research things mm -hmm. get a briefing Friday evening read it over the weekend right. make all kinds of follow-up calls on Monday and then mm -hmm. Tuesday you vote and it's over right. uh, in in the Senate uh, you might get your agenda sometimes the night before for certain committee meetings so I'm in my hotel room reading into the really? wee hours of the night. Now, do you feel that's because of the way the majority party operates, or is it the nature of the beast, or both? I think both, because mm. I don't want to be mm -hmm. like a negative kind of guy, because right. no, we're all working together. But, right. but there is something about being in the majority where you can withhold information from, say, the mm -hmm. Senate caucus, which are, uh, we, we have a staff as well. Mm -hmm. So this week I find out, you know, late, Monday afternoon that I have a committee meeting next Thursday in LA, mm. but but it was just that the, the, the Republican staff just found out about I it. I see. So you ask the chair, you call them up and say, hey, do you really want me there? Um, well, I don't control the staff, you know, and, and you get this whole I understand. great. At the same time, though, you have been working towards building relationships both within your caucus and in the Democratic caucus and in the assembly as well. Yeah. Why? Is it because you need to as a member of the minority party, or is it more than that? No, I'm, I'm a pretty much a really wonderful guy, and they just can't <laughs> stop talking to me. You're a nice me. enough guy. Um, <laughs> you <laughs> are. I'm sorry, Brad. <laughs> um, I, you know, you, you have to work together. Right. You have to have access. Um, and, and, and I will go up to them and say, I'm sorry I voted against your bill, but here's why, and it's, right. you know, here's where I'm coming from. Or, Boy, if your bill would have had X, Y, Z, sure. we could have. I could have worked with but, you. And sometimes I do vote for their bills. And but is there an opportunity to tell them that before the fact? Sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, again, when you get things late, all of a sudden you get a chance to pull up your microphone and ask a question of the author. So I've done that a couple right. times, and I've been. I I was embarrassed because. Uh -huh when I said I'd like to ask a question of the author and then I asked the question and then the, and the author of the bill looks at me with that deer in the headlights he's look not, he's like, not sure. like oh that's in my bill right. and I'm going yeah. oh, you know if, it were, if I would have been a supervisor I'd have called him up beforehand but they don't give me that time so I got to do it on the floor because everything's going mm -hmm. so fast so there have been a couple times where I've asked questions and just watched these guys just right not have answers and it was like oh I didn't mean to do that right you know no, I, I hear you wasn't like a gotcha kind of thing but uh, yeah if, if we had a, a little more regimented formalized right. way of handling legislation that would be sweet so there are proposals both legislative and even in initiative form to require that bills be in print for 72 hours yeah What's wouldn't that be great mm. wouldn't that just be awesome <laughs> tell me about that well it's just kind of crazy because uh, like I, I, I get done with the session and someone choose me out. You voted for this proclamation, oh, right, resolution. Yeah. Right. And I said, it's just a resolution. Right. Yeah, but it could become law. No, no, it won't, because right. it was telling the Congress how to do something. And, and, I, and you know, you get to a point where you say, why are we doing resolutions? They're, they're just a waste of time. Yeah. But you don't want to be this no guy all the time, right? So you just say, okay, let's, let's go. Um, but no one called beforehand, because they didn't right. know either. It just kind of pops up on the agenda, and there you are, and you got to make a vote. And it was 40-0. I mean, no one right. voted no. Right. It's just like, okay, fine. Just you know. and, and do you have the support, though, you need to receive the information so that you can be informed? Yeah, the, the, the Senate has its own staff, the, 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 Republican, the Republican caucus. Okay. We, have, we have a staff, and they mm -hmm. try to... Tell us as much about the bill as possible, what other bills in the past, mm -hmm. what, what's worked, what hasn't. Uh, then my staff reviews it, mm -hmm. I review it, we all get together before, theoretically, and say, okay, are we in agreement? Which, which bills do we not agree on? Mm -hmm. And it, it, who's got the better argument? So one of the compliments I've gotten mm -hmm. uh, being up there uh, from the insiders is, uh, is uh, Senator Morlock reads the bills. Right. Because I, I asked some pretty, t the second thing is, you ask great questions. We're actually watching 
Right. Your committee meetings right. now because you you're taking on right. Senator Hertzberg. I mean, you're right. you're. And well, I got to think you and Bob Hertzberg probably have a great relationship. We have a wonderful because we're both two, huggers. Yeah, both huggers <laughs> and both policy wongs yes. with a lot of history behind you, right. and so you really understand the intricacies yes. of so many of the issues having been presented. So along those lines. You know, you're known for having kind of uncovered uh, some issues that occurred in Orange County two decades ago and an accounting expert. Have you found an issue that is your own, that is going to become, you know, when we talk about, you know, the Morlock bill in 50 years. Well, it's really funny, it, Brad, because, uh -huh. you know, I, I've been screaming about pensions for yeah. since 2000, <laughs> 2000. And maybe before one. that. So sure. 15 years right. I've been complaining. Mm -hmm. So now it's ubiquitous and it's a problem nationally. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, the, the issue that became unique this year was mm. Caltrans. Because mm. they said we need to raise, we need to have a special section, mm -hmm. session because we didn't, uh, uh, we didn't raise any spending for Caltrans right. in the budget. In fact, the state budget for Caltrans has been $10.5 billion for 12 years. Wow. It's been stagnant. And with and inflation, look, we know that means it's less than $10.5 billion in real dollars. Point one. Right. Point two is underneath that, the gas tax has been going right. up. It's leveled out a little bit, but it was going up. So the skin in the game that the state had in transportation but, but the gas tax, I thought, disappeared. Been flat for, for 20 years. No, no, it's been growing. But, but in real dollars, if you look over those 12 years, you, it's been billions in growth. But the, but the overall spending has stayed. So if I did a, a chart, uh -huh. you know, here's gas tax kind of leveling out. Here's spending. Okay. And so this money has just disappeared. This, right. The state shifted it over. Where? To the pension plans, of okay. course. And, and which is what cities are doing and counties are doing. They're putting so much money in the pension plans that right. they're not taking care of roads. And, so and now they want us to do a car tax and a gas tax. And I'm saying... Well, let's see how Caltrans is running. Right. And so let's look at metrics. How do they compare to other Department of Transportation? And? Lousy. Lousy. Three yeah. times the average cost for one mile of repairs. I mean, we don't have snow on the ground here in Long Beach. <laughs> we have, you know, we, we don't have four I seasons understand. like Michigan yeah, and all these. And yeah. they're, they're building their roads and maintaining their roads. One third are, are, are the cost we have. So what they, do they, we do? Because we 62 know. 62% of their projects, according to the state auditor, right. are over budget. I mean, building, uh, rebuilding a Bay Bridge, $6.4 billion. Right. And it's now already deemed obsolete. Uh, well, it needs to be repaired because it got water damage already. Mm. They could have built a tunnel under the San Francisco right. Bay cheaper to get all these cars so, across. So what do we do? You know your friends in the League of California Cities, I mean, they are apoplectic about transportation oh, yeah. funding. And there's a lot of pressure to address the issue. You know, gas tax aside, fewer folks are driving vehicles that use gasoline or as much. So right. the gas tax is going to continue to drop. Theoretically. And so where do and, we and, go? And we're incentivizing people to buy electric cars. Right. We so, give them massive credits. We give right. them carpool ticket uh, right. uh, stickers. Access. You know, it's just crazy. We're, we're saying we need to raise more money, but we're, we're so do communicating we, do the we wrong thing. So special tax fee on electric vehicles to Absolutely. offset? Absolutely. Sorry. But or maybe you, even a, a tax on electricity. But it's interesting you say that because my guess is your friends in the Democratic Party would agree with that at a certain level that we need to offset These their lack of... These electric cars are heavier than regular cars. They're doing more damage to the roads. So there's some room for bipartisan agreement. We've got to figure this out. But, but when, when we have trends, and you got to get in front of trends. Right. Kids don't wear watches because they use their cell phones right. to find out what the time is. Figure out the trend and get in front of it. Don't all of a sudden step back here and say, oh, we didn't see this coming. Baloney. This has been going on for a long time, and you haven't been preparing for it. In fact, you run an inefficient department. The, the State Legislative Analyst Office came out with a report in May of 2014 that said that Caltrans was overstaffed, not by 35, not by 350, but 3,500 architects and engineers. 3,500 people. I mean, you'll come you, back you've been traveling us. to states. Right. Some states would love to have 3,500 people. You'll come back, tell us more about it. That's a half a billion dollars a year that he, could be going into roads. Senator John Morlock on Brad Pomeroy. It's his Charter Local Edition. So why taxes? <laughs> <laughs> I